This is the Nikon Coolpix S1. It's a compact point and shoot digital camera first released in 2005. I ended up buying this camera from a thrift store for like $10. And of course, once I got a battery and everything, it ended up not working, but I really liked the design. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and buy another version. So I bought one off eBay for around $40. So over the past month or so, I've been testing this camera and just wanted to share some of the results with you. What do we got? Monster energy. Hell yeah. As an overview, the camera is pretty basic, but you have a few small controls available. It has a built-in flash, macro mode, timestamp, and self-timer. There's also a zoom feature, although the quality gets a little bit worse. You're also able to adjust the white balance, color profiles, ISO sensitivity, and exposure compensation. I've only really been using the exposure compensation to get the exposure I want in different lighting conditions. The video quality is pretty terrible and somehow the audio is even worse, but that's not really why you buy this camera. For example, this is uh, what the video quality looks like. For example, this is uh, what the video quality 
looks like. But I do think the video is kind of fun and can be very situational if that's something that you're interested in. So let's get into the pros and cons. The pros, it's extremely small and can be brought pretty much anywhere. It's about half the size of my phone and it's significantly smaller than any of my point and shoot film cameras. So it's really nice to be able to bring along with me. The simplicity really gets the technical skills out of your way so you can focus on getting the images you want. I think the design is really cool. It's modern and it's made out of pretty high quality materials. The image quality is decent straight out of camera with minimal editing, but it is a little bit lower quality. In my opinion, it's a lot of fun to use this camera and it's a lot easier to hand it off to somebody that hasn't really used a camera before. So now let's get into some of the cons. So the image quality definitely isn't the best, but it's not the worst either. It depends on the look that you're going for. If you want a film-like look, knowing there will probably be digital noise, it's good for things like behind the scenes or memories. The video quality is basically non-existent, but it's not really why you buy this camera to begin with. And then the last con, which is probably kind of the biggest one, is the shutter speed. You're not able to actually control it, so unfortunately in different lighting situations, you're gonna have to stay extremely steady when you're taking your image, otherwise it's gonna end up blurry. And the flash helps here sometimes if you want the flash, but you're not always going to want the flash, so I just wish that you were able to actually control the shutter speed, which you're just not able to with this camera. Now, being a point and shoot camera from 2005, the image quality isn't the best, but I think that the image quality is surprisingly good. My best comparison for it is if you've ever shot 35 millimeter film and then gotten low quality scans from whoever you develop through and get your scans done from, if you do the low quality version, I think that these images are pretty close to that. In general, this camera is a lot of fun. While I don't necessarily think that it's for everybody and it's kind of a situational camera, I do think it's a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend it. And you don't necessarily have to get this specific camera. There are hundreds of different types of older digital cameras out there. Just take a look on eBay, do all the different filters that you want, get all of the different um, you know, features that you would like in your camera, filter it down, and then take a look at what's out there because I think you'd be shocked by how many different things there are. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.